Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So, today's upload is um, about the weather, obviously, but um, you may be looking at the thumbnail and uh, be, uh, you know, caught by the tension. You may be brought here by the thumbnail reading um, Foreshadowing of Winter. And let me explain, this isn't clickbait because uh, the weather that... We're, Okay, so right now we're in a heat wave, and uh, we're gonna be in the next couple of days cooling off into next week, a big cool off, and these cool offs could keep coming, these blasts of cooler air. And this could be a foreshadowing of the future because I made a video quite early on, a couple weeks back, and it showed the scientific data as to that cooler blasts of air in July and August usually lead to a cooler winter. I'll post a link to that video in the description box below. Very interesting um, scientific data and that's why I'm titling this video something along those lines. Um, and if you if you like these type of videos, if you want to uh, enjoy this channel, if you want to make uh, you know this channel grow and if you want to see this more of this work, uh, you could consider subscribing and make sure to t turn on a bell notification icon as well, If you, even if you are subscribed because that notifies you every time I make a video. Um, and it's, I think it's just beneficial if, if you're, if you're into that. And I see that a lot of people are putting notifications on my videos. So that is, that is amazing. Thank you for that. And, uh, let's, uh, let's just jump right into this. So right now we're looking again at a heat wave and people still seem to don't understand this, but that's completely fine. Um, because I mean, right now the headlines are heat wave, heat wave, heat wave. And the, yeah, there's going to be a heat wave. It's going to be very hot. And that's n not out of the question. However, it's not going to last for awfully too long. That uh, Sunday, July 21st, we, I mean, Saturday already starts across the north. You could see North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota already chilling off on Saturday. And this pushes the warm air um, down into the south around Sunday. It's already into mulch. <laughs> that was a combination of most and much. But most of the Midwest is under the cool weather now. And the thing is, with this cool-off, that it will reach the south and the southeast. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, if you live in the south or the south, Texas, Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, Arkansas, Tennessee, all the th southern states, or semi-southern states, anywhere you see this blue, you will be witnessing, experiencing much cooler temperatures. Um, some of these anomalies, which is uh, a deviance from average, are... 10 to 15 degrees below average so if you're looking at an average 90 degree day uh, in the south you will be witnessing possibly uh, 75 uh, degrees I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty um not not chilly not cold but it's gonna be very nice relief uh, at this time of the year it doesn't you know these cold blasts don't eat or chilly blasts don't indicate cold or unpleasantness um, it usually indicates very pleasant weather, low humidity, nice weather to go outside and do outdoor activities. And uh, but it's about below average, and you can see that um, you know that while that wave fades away and loses in vigor, we start seeing some above average temperatures return. However, notice this: we see another pretty big Arctic blast uh, coming uh, down from uh, Canada. And that's where usually they originate from, even the summer. And you can see that this one could be even more powerful and delivers possibly, um, the, obviously it won't be in the same location, you know, probably somewhere um, in the United States will deliver 12 to negative 20 degrees below average, uh, the second one. And it's seeming more and more likely now that the second one will occur. Um, earlier it was, you know, not so much. And then they're even showing a third one up here. You could see right there, possibly uh, dropping down, which is still uh, less likely because it's so far out but those first two are fairly likely and I am not the only one that's finally um, agreeing or you know noticing this if you look at the climate prediction center 8 to 14 day outlook July 26 through August 1st we see below average conditions for a good chunk of the country excluding the maybe the top west and the southeast and then notice how uh, it's uh, neutral so that basically says it could go either above average in these locations or it could go below average Chances are, at this point, uh, these locations will go below average and these locations will uh, possibly go above average, maybe uh, stay neutral though. If we go to the Climate Prediction Center official 30-day outlook, this, is, this was issued July 18th, so this is actually today. Um, 
which uh, is very, very fresh. You can see that uh, they're showing for August. This is a 30 month, a 30 day outlook. So for August, valid August 2019, made 18th of July 2019. Uh, a good uh, portion of the country is equal chances, and some are below average. Now, you may be uh, wondering, well, okay, I live in New Mexico and it's going to be warm, so it's not going to be cold. You're lying. Well, um, no, because. I think this over-exaggerated the warmth, first of all. Second of all, the cold that I'm talking about is in the same region where they're showing this below average and it's equal chances. When there is a blast of air that is uh, encompassing about the similar area that's shown in the white on this area, which I think will be below average, they're just unsure about it yet because it's 30 days out. Um, it, it, when it cold encompasses that area during the summer, we tend to see a relation to that uh, during the winter and it is uh, I did not know about that um, I you know I if you searched it up right now maybe you wouldn't find a you know clear cut there was actually study but if you look at the analogs the historical analogs that's what happens usually when we see a cooler July with or cooler like cooler late July and August with cooler blasts of air we could see a fairly chilly winter um, and uh, you know it's still far out but it's definitely there and um, it's it's it could definitely you know indicate that we could be looking at some similar cold shots of similar in nature similar in areas um, for the country across the US during uh, the winter time so you know it's very far out but still it's very interesting to show you this um, also this is uh, I wanted to show you the three to four day outlook. This was updated 12th of July, so a little bit older, but still relatively fresh. You could see July 27th through August 9th, so the three to four week time frame. You could see below average and equal chances for a good chunk of the country, which again, I think below average will be in most of the area that covers the white. Um, I don't think it's more, it's leaning towards more of a blue expanding on a map rather than the orange. The orange is kind of disappearing. Uh, it was for us, for a, uh, it was for a while uh, dominant, especially with this heat wave that we're having. But again, that's gonna be four days, five days in the most locations where it's extremely hot. It's been warm, but not extremely hot. Um, for too long, but if you look at the precipitation probability experimental, uh, we see that uh, it's experimental because it's not as uh, it hasn't been get, getting as getting as good ratings as the temperature probability, and so they call it experimental because it may or may not be as accurate um, as this temperature one. But you could see that uh, it's possible. This isn't really that important, but um, in kind of a long range outlook, if you will. Uh, in this video as well embedded in this video you could see possibly above average for the north and mid Ohio Valley Midwest Great Lakes um, Southern Great Lakes and then uh, we could see a little bit by the Colorado Four Corners area kind of uh, a little bit north of that above average and below for the Northwest and below for Texas but um, in terms of my winter outlook uh, if you're still watching this video I like eight minutes I thank you so much uh, means a lot and comment down uh, winter outlook something like that just comment down winter outlook in the comments box below uh, so I know that you're still watching this and if you're watching this I want to inform you that uh, I think I will wait with my winter outlook a tad bit longer um, probably still maybe late July I was ex you know supposed to release it around the 20th 21st but I think I'll release it a little bit later because um, it's I just don't feel it's right still I don't feel people are still in the right mindset to watch these the winter outlook videos and I want to wait just a little bit tad longer and see what happens um, I think it's I think it's it's gonna be one of my best videos I've ever created it, it looks so good um, at least that's what I think it is uh, that's what it you know that's what it seems to look like but it could be looks can be deceiving um, let's go to the ensemble member of the GFS and I want to show you that this isn't just a GFS model because some <laughs> some people are really against the GFS and I want to show you that uh, that the GEFS ensemble member are still showing cool weather for the US it's not just the GFS and you can see that as we go further and further out into time uh, this weekends because a confidence weekend so uh, they could be more a little bit more warm but notice how um, it, you can see that it's it's still there the chilliness um, it's definitely not gone so that could uh, that could you know indicate 
a little bit warm, a little bit chilly, but more uncertainty as we further go out. But uh, definitely the GFS is a strong component, or a, a po like strong mm, team member showing the cool weather. Uh, in terms of the ECMWF, I want to show you this. Let's go to 500 millibar height anomaly, and. Uh, let's quickly I want to show you this because right now we could see there's a heat wave and if you were to look at this you wouldn't be able to tell really um, uh, based the temperatures or uh, you know the two meter temperature anomalies based off this and this is completely something else this is ECMWF 500 millibar joule potential height anomaly basically all you need to know from this is that this basically tells us where the jet stream is going to lie and the millibars where they're going to line up so notice how there's tight millibars up here to the north that indicates of a high pressure rising pr air and that indicates very warm air. Um, warm air rises and you can see that is what it produces and that is why we have a heat wave going on right now. Um, if we were to go forward now uh, into say hour 72, notice how there is sort of a more of a, a roller coaster um, effect to the jet stream and that basically you can see shows that uh, it's going something more like this, the jet stream now. It's not really just staying out like that flat it's going more like a uh it, there's a ridge in the west and a trough in the east those are the proper terms but i wanted to explain it a little bit differently but you could see warm air most likely here cooler air for the east and this is the european model this isn't a gfs so it's also showing this if you go to the hour 120 same thing hour 144 same thing hour 168 maybe a little bit more warmth getting in towards the center of the country but generally the pattern still looks and then towards the end of the forecasting period, it looks a little bit different, but um, we could still be looking at uh, some cool conditions. So, um, you know, this video is going to be over. So thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking this video. Consider subscribing to this channel. And I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.